Aldis podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the US and Europe. Today, you are listening to our AI in Action series, where leading minds in AI from across the world share their story, success, and advice. AI in Action cuts through the hype and explores the true impact of artificial intelligence in our world today. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guest today is Artem Krupanev. Artem is the VP of Strategy at Augury. Artem, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Nice to be it's here. Our, it's our pleasure. So, Artem, let's start with a background of yourself, please. Can you give us a brief overview of your journey in technology from where you first got started, some of the roles you've held along the way, and on what's led you to where you are today as the, the VP of Strategy at Augury? So I've started about 15 years ago. I'm actually used to being the only non-engineer in the room. And by this time, my background or my academic background is really in political science. But very quickly after briefly finishing my master's and then in Israel and teaching for a little while, I jumped into technology and co-founded my first company and then started a second one with the team. So I have some experience starting small early stage startups. And then I was also a consultant for a little while, working with a company called Bionic, where we actually created startups within very large companies, companies like GE and Tyco and Citigroup and Nike and others. And that was a tremendous amount of experience for me as an entrepreneur in in these early stages, also as a person in product management and product innovation really helping drive multiple initiatives from the very early stages of inception all the way through to product market fit and beyond, and also doing so across multiple different in- industries, both on the consumer side, but I would say 80% or more on the enterprise side. So enterprise software, enterprise hardware, and AI. And that really led me to join Augury initially as a head of product, VP of product, and then the role evolved into a slightly wider role in strategy. And uh, Augury is a company that really combines the best of many of these worlds where we are really serving the industrial world, the manufacturing world. We are focused on large enterprises and we are also combining hardware and software and AI technologies. So for me, this is really a sweet spot, which I really like. So this is a, in a nutshell that what has brought me here. Well, thank you for that. It's great to learn about your journey and particularly your decision to work on the consulting side, which gave you some great insight to business, which layered on top of your entrepreneurial experience and has brought you to where you are today. So you touched on it briefly there at some of the industries that Augury works in, but take a step back. Tell us all about Augury, who you are, what you do, what's the mission of the business, and then we'll talk about the AI behind it all. Augury started about 10 years ago with a simple but very ambitious vision is to make sure that people can always rely on the machines that matter. When we talk about machines, primarily we're talking about industrial equipment, equipment that helps us produce the basic goods and services that that we need, whether it's food or beverages or chemical ingredients or building materials or energy, oil and gas, petrochemicals and, and so forth, as well as help on the utility side, help us get clean water, help us get the electricity that we need and so forth. That industrial equipment is really the backbone of the economy. And it's also a bit of a shadow economy because we, we get the things that we need and we rely on electricity, we rely on the goods that we are, we're consuming, but we really have little insight into what goes behind the scenes, the equipment, the machinery, and production processes that helps manufacture, uh, produce the things that we need. But when those machines fail, then we don't get the things that we need. And really the production lines stop, the factories stop working, and there are disruptions in, in, in what in the goods and services that, that we rely on. So machines are incredibly important, and we can understand that, but preventing failure and enabling those machines to operate well is really the core of, of where Augury started and Augury's business. And Augury does that through the combination of advanced artificial intelligence and very standardized data that comes from proprietary sensors and IoT. 
and combines that into a service. So we provide diagnostics as a service, machine health as a service to manufacturers and to industrial companies. So that's in a nutshell what Algreed does. And we've been successful and helpful to a good number of large manufacturing companies across the globe. We work with over 100 manufacturers today. And we also work with a number of partners on embedding the technology into the machines themselves and into the production processes themselves, meaning that in the future, when you build a new machine, it should be able to tell you exactly what's wrong with it without you having to do any of the guesswork. So we take the guesswork out of reliability and maintenance of that equipment by predicting machine failures. So that that has been where Augury has started. And now we're transitioning and expanding those capabilities into not just the health of the equipment, machine health, but also in, into the health of processes. We call that process health, which means that it's not enough to understand when and how your machines fail, but you really, as a manufacturer, you want to understand for that specific process, product that you're producing, what are all the parameters that are affecting its quality, its throughput, and also its energy use and its cost. So process health AI actually helps us understand and helps our customers understand deeply all the different parameters that influence the output of their production, and then also help them optimize in real time all the different settings on the production line that can help them produce a perfect product every time. And again, when we talk about a perfect product, it's not just a product that has the highest quality, but also the most is the most cost effective and is also optimized for sustainability of that production process. So now we're combining machine health, machines that essentially operate and fail much less frequently with process health, which is the product that gets produced at its optimal level. And by combining both of those, we really are helping manufacturers unlock a different level of productivity across their production factories, across their processes, and also make the production itself a lot more sustainable. Artem, you, you mentioned there, look, you're working with hundreds of companies across various industries, and you also have partners who are embedding the technology from its inception. Can you give us a customer journey, a recent example or a story of when a customer comes to you with a particular problem or issue? How do you go about defining it? What's the project cycle to the point of implementation? And most importantly, the impact to the customer. How is machine health or machine AI helping them get benefit from augury? Sure, absolutely. So we work with over 100 manufacturers and across many of these customers that we have, we are either deployed in early stages at, let's say, two or three sites up to 30, 40, 50 sites globally across their whole manufacturing portfolio. And so what we've learned in just a few years of deploying this technology across manufacturing is that what really matters is the use case and the outcome for the customers. It's not about the technology itself, but rather can their operator, can the process engineer, can the reliability engineer get the insight that they need without significantly disrupting their work processes that they have today or significantly changing their infrastructure of how they work and the hardware and the physical machines that they work with and just do their job 30, 40, 200, 500% better. And can, can they do that, that quickly and effectively? So we really invested the majority of our product kind of philosophy and approach and process and capabilities into making sure that manufacturers can get started right away. And it's very simple to start using and they can trust the insights that we provide. And this is why we've developed our algorithms to be over 99% accurate, actually over 99.9% accurate at detecting machine failures. So they can be trusted. They work time and time again. We have an insurance backed guarantee to our AI, meaning that if you're covered, then if a machine fails on our watch, we actually have a program that can pay to repair or replace that machine. So that provides a lot of trust in the beginning for customers to get started. But then what we really have invested even more into is the engagement factor, is the ability for somebody who doesn't have any background with technology, definitely with something that's more kind of advanced, such as data science, but just to get the insights in plain, simple language. And here's what you need to do. Here's why it's happening. And here's what you need to fix and when specifically without, again, changing the way they work in any meaningful manner, but really 
now being able to do the work that's based on AI-driven insight versus be, being driven by experience, for instance, or some kinds of rules that they've set. So that is the basic tenets of what drives the impact is very quick insight, very accurate insight. And then uh, they're delivered in a way that is very simple to use and understand, very simple to adopt. The other side of that is that we also have a vision in terms of where we would like to help our customers get to. some of the more advanced or more progressive customers that we work with share this vision. And that vision is really around breaking down silos between the different functions within the manufacturing organization. What I mean by that is that today, typically in a traditional sense, maintenance does not really speak to rely maintenance doesn't really speak to, let's say, process. Reliability doesn't speak to, let's say, other parts of the manufacturing or organization and they're incentivized to essentially do different functions and they work on different schedules and very often there are conflicts between them this is just the way that traditional manufacturing work has been set up historically we would like to change that and we would like those teams to work together in a much more cross-functional manner in a very similar way to the way let's say software engineering teams are working and that's been made possible through the devops and various tools and capabilities over the course of the evolution of software engineering. We would like to take some of those methodologies that have actually originated in manufacturing and kind of put them back into manufacturing through the use of those easy to use capabilities, AI driven insights and so forth. So we can bring those teams much closer together so that they can collaborate and make decisions so they can drive really the efficiency of the whole business not just the efficiency of their own specific organizations. So that's the vision that we're driving for our customers, combining embedding AI into a very simple to use capability and tool set, and also driving a change management vision for our customers. This is how adoption is driven. And then just to mention, you asked about how does a typical rollout look like? Typically, we start with one or two plants, whether it's on the production health side or the machine health side, and we roll out across production lines and within uh, two to three months our customers already are seeing full ROI full payback for those programs so we typically see it anywhere between four four times or seven times payback per year and then it just makes complete sense to go faster and roll that out across the whole organization for some of our customers Augury is the fastest rollout of digital technology they've ever seen across their manufacturing organization. And that's because it just makes concrete value and concrete sense. And also it's quite easily deployable on, on a global scale. So this is where we are today with these manufacturers. Of course, in some, with some of them early stages within the journey, but with many of them, we already are rolled out at full scale and there are significant improvements for them. You are listening to the Aldis Podcast. When you're looking to scale your team, or if you are interested in showcasing your company in a future episode, reach out today. Or if you're in the market for a new role, visit our website to view open positions, www.allthis.com. Staying on the topic then of the team and the technology behind the scenes, mm-hmm. you obviously work heavily on the strategy side, but a big part of what you do is speaking to customers about the team that you have behind the scenes working on all of this. For an audience of AI and data professionals, can you give us some insight into what it's like to be part of the team on the tech side at Orgery? How many people are involved? How big is the team? And looking ahead, what growth do you expect to see over the next 12 to 24 months? Absolutely. I think we have a tremendous team to date that we've built. Overall, when you look at the company at our size, we're about a 450 person company. We have tripled in size over the last year and a half. So you can imagine the hyper growth that we're in. As a company, we're actually one of the first industrial AI companies that have reached a billion dollar unicorn valuation. And so we have had a lot of growth on our team, but we're still quite heavy in terms of the distribution of the team on R&D. And I think we will stay that way for some time just because there's a lot of investment in technology and capabilities and very interesting challenges. So when you think about what our team, the R&D team and the product teams are tasked with solving, it's really taking in multiple sources of data and making sure that they're standardized. So we're developing our own hardware and then figuring out what this exactly are the signals that indicate issues with equipment, which is 
we're pushing the boundaries of science in terms of signal processing and kind of physical physics-based analysis of equipment and also of processes. The other piece of innovation is combining multiple approaches to AI in order to solve the problem of, first of all, understanding and detecting machine failures. And that combines deep and wide networks, right? Neural networks, the whole field of machine learning, some physics-based models, as well as ongoing anomaly detection. And the combination and reinforcement between those two is a very interesting, innovative field, combining multiple approaches to get the right outcome for end customers. And, and, I, and I think that the other piece is that really solving a really wide optimization problem by looking at really tens of thousands of data points, and in some cases, hundreds of thousands of data points across a full production process and correlating between them in a way that helps you optimize for multiple objectives at the same time. So we have really from an optimization standpoint and also in terms of classification, multiple approaches that we combine in order to get a highly accurate, highly reliable result for our end customers. And so compiling signals, physics of equipment and solving these classification and optimization problems with different approaches with AI and then driving an end result that an end user can rely on and really understand every time really non-expert users that can take that and make decisions that can impact the outcome of their production process and do that reliably every time. That is a huge problem to solve that we've undertaken. And this is the solve uh, the, pro the problem that our team is solving effectively. So when you think about our technical team, and they're just incredibly smart, incredibly bright people that are looking at various aspects of this whole complex problem and are solving it towards the same goal, the same score and meeting the jobs to be done for our end users and our customers and doing so very effectively and now starting to do that at a very large scale. So there's a lot of interesting challenges to be solved at Augury today. Final question from me then, which stays on the topic of the various interesting challenges to be solved on the technical side. You talked about the success of the business and that billion dollar valuation and the increased demand for what you're doing. When you look ahead for the next 12, 24 months, what are you most excited about for the future? Of and part two of that question would be what opportunities are there going to be for people on the technology side working with an AI to potentially come and join you guys on that journey? Of course. So the bigger picture is really one of transformation for an industry that is paramount to solving some of humanity's biggest problems. So I know it's, it sounds really fluffy, right? When we talk about how do we contribute to solving humanity's problems, but when we talk about industrial transformation, when we're talking about making existing industrial processes that utilize as much as 60% of the world's energy, more effective, more efficient, and doing that as a step change, not doing that just incrementally, but really significantly improving those. That is one of the ways for us to really put a dent in climate change and really put a dent in sustainability and also put a huge dent in some of the inherent problems with workforce equality and the transition between kind of generations of workforce within manufacturing, within the industry. So we see industry as a key to transformation and also key to solving some of humanity's biggest problems. And we are contributing to the solution. We believe we have a path to doing that with technology. So there's a big mission for us and we're definitely a mission-driven company in that sense. So that's exciting for us. And working on solving those problems and translating that efficiency that we're creating, not just into bottom line and profits for our customers, but really into making their production processes and also industries like oil and gas, for instance, into a lot more sustainable and efficient processes. That's where our vision lies for the next couple of years. When we think about our team and the growth, there's a tremendous amount of opportunities as we scale because we're going into new markets. We're developing new sensing technologies. We're developing new types of algorithms and are also driving some of the science behind how do you look at solving these problems in manufacturing and industry. And if you think of take it a few years forward, it would be almost unthinkable, in my opinion, to run a production process that is not optimized in that way that doesn't have AI embedded and is telling you what is the best way to, to run that process. And the same for equipment for machines would be unthinkable to have a piece of equipment that essentially is not connected, that is not telling you exactly what's wrong with it before it fails. And that is a tremendous problem to solve at scale. And the team needs that we have range from, of course, AI and data science, and we have physicists working on our team. We have people that work on hardware, embedded systems for 
and obviously a lot of very talented software engineers and product managers that that help drive that whole machine. So when we talk about the R&D side of the table, we're definitely expanding and we're driving growth there. And about half the, of the organization today, about 40% to half of the organization is, of course, customer facing. So it's not enough to just provide the technology. We also need to help the customer transition in a SaaS and a subscription model from one mode of behavior into a new way of working. And so customer success and, of course, sales and marketing and those teams are also growing at a rapid clip today. So there's a lot of opportunity on both sides of the table, both on the customer facing side and the marketing and sales side and customer success side, as well as R&D. And we're looking for talent on both sides. Artem, thank you so much for coming on today. Really appreciate you sharing your own background. Great to learn about the work you're doing at Augury. You guys really are revolutionizing the manufacturing industry, and I know it's having a significant impact on your customers, and sounds like you're only just getting started. We wish you, the team, and everyone there at Augury the best luck in the months and years to come. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Aldis Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any Android podcast of choice. You can also head over to our website, www.aldis.com, to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.